Hello, I'm Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success, as well as I'm the Medical Director for the Center for Hormone Health and Wellness in Newport News, Virginia. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the hormone side of the whole thing. Yes, I talk a lot about the, the weight loss side, but today we're talking about the hormone side of the whole thing. And hormone replacement is a controversial subject. Now, I've named this talk here, Age Healthier, Live Happier, and basically we're going to try to talk about optimizing your hormones to accomplish both. You want to age healthier, you want to live happier. Isn't that a, something we all want to do? Okay? And we can do that or we can help with that by optimizing hormones. What we're talking about really are both testosterone and estrogen. And this is both for men and women. So it's maybe testosterone for men, but testosterone and estrogen for women. And we'll kind of talk about kind of why it's a controversial but then kind of try to get rid of, kind of discuss why the, the really, there really shouldn't be a controversy because this is something can be very helpful for many, many people. Fix a lot of symptoms and actually prevent and protect you from some medical problems. All right, so let's dive in. We can get my slides going here. Here we go. So a little bit about myself. Yes, I specialize in weight loss. I've done weight loss surgery for the last 25 years, you know, medical weight loss for the last 15 years, and I'm founder and director of the Center for Weight Loss Success in Newport News, Virginia, but we also do hormone replacement therapy. And I'm a certified practitioner practitioner for BioT, the BioT method of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And certainly if you're considering hormone replacement therapy, you definitely need to be considered bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And so yes, I'm the medical director for the Center for Hormone Health and Wellness, also in Newport News, Virginia, basically the same location there. All right, now where we're really going with this, again, we're talking about both testosterone as well as estrogen, both for men and women. And the best treatment plan probably is using subcutaneous hormone pellets. And we'll talk about why that is as we get through all this. But these little hormone pellets are placed in the, in the uh, subcutaneous tissue, typically in the hip area, um, in the fatty tissue there. And subsequently, they're very slowly absorbed and they can optimize hormone there. So and this really is kind of the ultimate hormone replacement therapy for both testosterone and estrogen. All right, so what are hormones? You know, we throw that term out there all the time. What is a hormone? A hormone is basically just a chemical messenger. That's all it is. This chemical, okay, this uh, biochemical substance is made by a certain tissue in your body. It's released into the bloodstream and then it sends a message throughout the, throughout the body and the tissues that have a receptor for that messenger are going to receive the message and they'll be told to do something. So only the tissues with the receptors to that hormone will respond to that hormone. It's kind of like the lock and key concept. It has to fit perfectly in order for this to work well. And hormones are one of the main tools that your body uses, uses to maintain homeostasis or balance. So hormone balance is a key concept. Now, when we talk about hormones, there's a big difference between bioidentical and synthetic hormones. Okay, now this is just one example. I just used progesterone as an example. Progesterone is a hormone, okay? Um, and the top picture on here actually shows bioidentical progesterone. Now, when I say bioidentical, what it means, it means it looks exactly the way your body makes it normally. Okay? It looks exactly like it, as opposed to a synthetic hormone, which is in the bottom half of that picture. As a synthetic progesterone, it's actually not even called progesterone because it's kind of like progesterone. So why, you know, what's the differentiation there? Okay, well, again, bioidentical means it looks exactly the way your body makes it. Synthetic, it doesn't look exactly the way your body makes it. And what's the difference then? Well, typically, here's the big thing. It's, it's money that we're talking about. When I say that, it's because anything that occurs in nature, a bioidentical hormone, can't be patented. And if it can't be patented, then typically large drug companies can't make a lot of money from it. So therefore, large drug companies will make a similar looking hormone, but it's not exactly the same. 
so it's not bioidentical, and if they can make it kind of like, so it'll do most of the things that that hormone would do, then they can actually patent it, and subsequently then they can make a lot of money from it. And so okay, there's the big difference there. It's a money thing, getting the bottom line to all that. But the problem is, is if something looks a little bit different, and you'll notice on that bottom picture that there's a little bit of extra oxygen, carbon sitting off the side, as well as at the bottom end of all this, and it makes it look a little bit different. And because it's a little bit different, the potential risk, the potential side effects, how well it actually works is going to be different. Because again, we need that lock and key concept. And if it kind of works, all right, that, okay, that potentially can be a good thing if it's actually helping. But if it actually ends up bringing more side effects or more risk involved with that, that's where the problem comes in. And we actually start looking at overall. Basically, bioidentical hormones have a protective effect for lots of health problems, or potential health problems, protective effect. Synthetic hormones typically raise your risk for number of health problems. And that's the biggest difference right there. Bioidentical can protect you. Synthetic hormones typically don't and potentially can increase risk of number of different problems, which we'll get to here in a little bit. All right, again, we're talking about sex hormones, which basically is estrogen, testosterone, as well as progesterone. Progesterone is not something that we typically want to replace a whole lot. There are a couple reasons to consider replacement of progesterone, and we'll talk about it. But progesterone, a common side effect of progesterone is actually weight gain. And so we, if we're using progesterone, we typically like to use the smallest dose possible. And if we don't need to use progesterone, we actually try to avoid it. Because again, a common side effect of progesterone is weight gain. It's actually, progesterone is actually a very safe hormone. You could actually take large, large doses. And if you don't get that side effect, okay, well then great, you, it actually can be helpful. But again, many women notice a common side effect with progesterone is weight gain. So typically we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. We try to keep that to a minimum. Obviously, the other things that I do is weight loss. So therefore, that's something that works against weight loss and that's not something we try to utilize too much then. But all sex hormones are derived from cholesterol. So if someone you know, tells you, oh, you got to get rid of cholesterol, it's like, no, we cannot live without cholesterol. Every single cell in our body needs it. But all the sex hormones are actually derived from cholesterol. That's kind of the basic component. Then they get modified in order to come up with what the actual hormone looks like. And when we talk about sex hormones, again, it's testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. Now, humans make three types of estrogen. Estrone, often shortened as E1, estradiol, diol being E2, and then estriol, tri being E3. So E1, E2, E3. Men and women share all these hormones. Now for the estrogen, estradiol is the major one. That's the most important one. So men and women share all these hormones. The only difference is the absolute and relative amounts. In that, so typically with different hormones, men may need more of one, testosterone, for example, women need less, but we need them all. We, we can't really, you don't want to get rid of any of these. You don't want zero. Zero is a bad number for any of these things. All right, and hormones tend to wreak havoc, meaning that especially if they get out of balance, and you probably recognize some of all this. Okay. Just a few facts about hormones and menopause. Every day about in the U.S., about 3,500 women enter menopause. The symptoms, though, of menopause can begin up to 15 years before menopause actually occurs. The average age of menopause is somewhere between 50 and 51. But again, you can start getting symptoms up to 15 years ahead of time. Now, literally, it can last. You know, some of the symptoms can last sometimes forever. Usually, there's a set kind of, there's a period of time where they're the worst. And, uh, any woman that's gone through that can often tell you about those type of things. Now, some women have very minimal symptoms. Some women have terrible symptoms. Now, males also kind of, if you want to say, suffer from a similar thing. We often call it andropause. But male hypogonadism, which means they're making less testosterone, is present in about 39%. So almost 40% of males over 45 years old. So it's a significant percentage. And as 
our age goes up, this number also goes up. Men tend to lose about 3% of their testosterone production per year after age 35. Now, this is also true for women. It is, it's often just not considered nearly as much. But testosterone really is your vitality hormone, feel-good hormone. All right, we'll talk about estrogen first. Now, it's the primary female hormone. Again, we make three types. The ovaries mainly make estrogen. They all, the adrenal glands can also make some estrogen. So when someone goes through menopause, and basically menopause just means your ovaries quit working. Okay, so you quit have cycles. Okay? So when you go through menopause, the ovaries quit working, the adrenal glands can make a little bit of estrogen. But not much. So typically the number goes way, way down. Now estrogen has all kinds of different functions kind of throughout all your tissues. And there are estrogen receptors widely distributed throughout your body. If you think about that, there wouldn't be receptors on all these different tissues if you didn't need them. And so the body needs these things, and the receptors are there because there's a message that needs to be received okay, in your brain, in the breast tissue, in your bones, in the blood vessels, in the reproductive organs. I mean, that's the obvious one, the reproductive organs, but they're literally receptors all throughout your body and there are things that those tissues need to do as well. So we take away the messenger, the estrogen, then the message is no longer received and therefore the tissues don't respond as well. The estrogens are critical for sexual maturation. That should be obvious for women as go through puberty and then for the reproductive cycle. Again, adult women produce three types of estrogens. Estradiol is the most important one. Estrone, you know, we typically try to avoid estrone too because a uh, side effect of estrone is also weight gain. So try to keep that to an absolute minimum. But estrone levels do go up after menopause, which is one of the reasons why women often notice, gee, it's harder to control my weight after menopause. That's normal. Right? That isn't weird, actually, and that's real because estrone levels tend to go up after menopause and estrone tends to make you gain weight. Estriol is actually very important during pregnancy, so we're not going to be discussing that too much. So it's really estradiol. Estradiol is the one we're really talking about. It's the main one throughout your lifetime. Progesterone, like I mentioned, or mentioned earlier, um, it's a natural antagonist or balancer to estrogen. Okay, And so if you have a uterus, you, you want both estrogen and progesterone because it'll balance each other out. Okay? It's kind of the yin and the yang of the female hormone system. And the relative balance determines a state of physical and emotional well-being. Or, if they're unbalanced, some unpleasant symptoms. Now, progesterone, again, is usually and mainly produced by the ovaries, but small amounts, again, by the adrenal glands. And receptors also found throughout the body, but not nearly as widely but also the brain, the breasts, the, the blood vessels, and reproductive organs. Low progesterone levels put women at a little higher risk for fibroids, endometriosis, okay? and eventually in the long, long time can actually be uterine tumors, uterine cancer. Testosterone. Testosterone is really getting your, in your kind of feel-good hormone. We think of it as a male hormone. But it's not just a male hormone. It's made by, in males, it's made by the testicles, but also the adrenal glands. In women, it's made by the adrenal glands and the ovaries. So the ovaries make testosterone. You know, we think of it just making estrogen, but no, the ovaries make testosterone. And testosterone is absolutely critical to optimal functioning of many systems. Based, it's, it is sex drive, but also heart health, preservation of bone and muscle mass, which is our overall metabolism. It's preventing osteoporosis and also just that sense of well-being. Some of the most um, dense receptors to testosterone in your brain. Okay? And so it does help with that sense of well-being. can actually prevent depression. There are a lot of different things that it actually affects. But again, the receptors wouldn't be there in the tissues if there wasn't something important that the hormone was telling them to do. Now, women produce a lot less testosterone than males do. 
And that kind of makes sense. Okay. Now the reason is because women are much more sensitive to testosterone. So they don't need nearly as much. So men make about 10 times the amount that women do. Now, just like in men, production falls by about 50% from the age of 20 to 40. So as we age, levels tend to go down. That's both that's true for both men and women. But for women, it tends to happen a lot sooner. Okay. From the age of 20 to 40, these numbers fall way down and continue to fall throughout menopause till basically often during menopause, the numbers are almost non-existent. They're tiny. Okay. And when we think about hormone replacement, we often think about estrogen. But for most women, actually, they probably need the testosterone because a lot of the symptoms that go along with menopause are actually symptoms of low testosterone, not so much low estrogen. The big things with low estrogen are night sweats, hot flashes, you know, which all you know, women, you know, some women get them terrible, other women ah, I don't really notice it too much. But some of these things are very common too. I'm tired, mood swings, just extra, I'm just anxious all the time. I don't sleep well. I'm not thinking clear. I can't remember diddly squat. No real sex drive at all. I get more depressed. Yes, then hot flashes, night sweats, but also then weight gain, joint pain, because the bones need this. Migraines, just that hitting the wall later in the afternoon. All these things sound familiar? Well, these are all symptoms of hormones going way out of whack and hormones just decreasing. And it's mainly testosterone and also the estrogen side of the whole thing. Now, hormone replacement therapy was fairly common 15, 20 years ago. And then all of a sudden, there was a huge monkey wrench thrown in this whole thing because in 2003, the Women's Health Initiative trial, which was a huge trial of 50 to 60,000 women in it over many years, came out and said, hey, published in 2003, that for women that have hormone replacement therapy, and what they were talking about is kind of Prempro, Premarin, okay? Prempro is Premarin and Progestin, okay? such synthetic hormones. So that there was a 41% increase in stroke, 29% increase in heart attacks, higher increase, 26% increase in breast cancer, twice the rate of blood clots, 76% increase in Alzheimer's, dementia, all these things were worse for women that had hormone replacement therapy. And so in 2003, pretty much everyone was taken off hormone replacement therapy. And unfortunately, women were kind of left with no alternative. Although there actually has been a safe alternative method available for years. And when they started looking more closely at this data, this data is very real for synthetic hormones. And that's the difference is with when they broke out the women that were actually treated with bioidentical hormones, they found that, hey, they actually had a protective effect and they had less likely to have strokes, have heart attacks, have breast cancer, blood clots, Alzheimer's. So they were actually less likely. There was a protective effect in this. Unfortunately, once that big study came out and they talked about they just lumped all hormone replacement to therapy together in the one thing that hormone replacement therapy is bad. What they didn't really say and they should have said is that it's synthetic hormone replacement therapy is bad. Is that yes, you should use it for only a short period of time. Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy actually can be protective. So a lot of, I'll say, unnecessary side effects, potential problems were related to oral, so meaning taking it as a pill, synthetic estrogen therapy. So breast pain, increased risk of endometrial cancer, breast cancer, vaginal bleeding, even headaches, nausea, vomiting, fluid retention, blood clots, leg cramps, uh, gallstones. These are all related to the synthetic estrogen therapy as pill form. Okay? So right away, we find that synthetics and a pill form there may be actually be a problem with. Now just to back up a little bit before I jump into this patches things, I'm going to digress here for a second. Now if you think about it, anything we take in, 
anything we take, whether it be food, whether it be a medication, whatever, is going to pass from our intestinal tract. And the first place it goes from the intestinal tract is actually through the liver. And the liver is actually very good at taking some of the things that we put a medication, hormone specifically, is that it can take some of these hormones and actually start breaking them down so that the rest of your body doesn't actually seem very well, unless we were to give you great big doses. And if you think about it, the only difference between a medication and a poison is the dose. You know, a Tylenol works great for a headache. A bottle of Tylenol can kill you. Well, that's just dosing right there. Okay? So pills often don't work very well, specifically for estrogen as well as testosterone. They don't work well at all because of the dosing we have to give you so that the rest of your body would see it actually is pretty high. And that's when then side effects start going way up. So pills for both estrogen and testosterone don't work well. Okay? Patches. Now, they do make patches and creams bioidentical. So, yeah, estradiol can be done as a patch and as a cream. We'll talk about creams next. But the problem is, is that you don't get very good levels. Your skin is meant to be a barrier. It's meant to keep things out, not let things in. And so we put creams and patches on that. It actually doesn't work very well. And about... 45% of people that use patches just don't absorb much at all. Right? And so they don't get very good levels at all. And there's lots of problems. You get the adhesive problems. You got to move it around. You have to change it all the time. You do get some side effects because, again, you have to give you fairly good sized doses of weight gain. Um, not quite as much as you saw as on the synthetic hormones as the pills, but still, um, there are these problems and most people don't absorb what you really can't get very good levels and they tend to be erratic levels with patches as well as creams and with creams they tend to be messy you gotta rub it everywhere you gotta um, often you have to put it you know, sometimes even twice a day uh, you have to be careful when you're getting dressed you're not getting on your clothes you have to be careful you can transfer it to other beings whether it be children pets whatever it's messy and again doesn't get absorb very well. Which brings us then to pellets, kind of where we started this discussion. With pellets, okay, we can get really good levels and they're going to stay there till they're gone. And for most women, they're going to last a good three to four months. For men, they may last a good six months or more. But they are biologically identical, so what bioidentical looks exactly the way your body made it, and it's both estrogen as well as testosterone. Now when I say it's bioidentical, it doesn't actually mean it came from humans. It's like, no, we can take compounds from plants. They specifically use yams, but they actually use the compounds in yams and they can chemically, you know, chemistry, they can actually make it look exactly the way your body makes it. And your body can't tell whether it made it or whether it came from, you know, we gave it to you type of thing. But it's constantly available. If we give it as a pellet form, it's just slowly absorbed and it's absorbed directly. So it doesn't pass first thing through the liver. It's like, no, it goes through your bloodstream. Your entire body sees it. And you get this nice steady state as opposed to this roller coaster ride. Okay? It's safe. It is hassle-free. We can individualize dosing. It lasts a good, good three, four months for, for women does require a little procedure, okay, just a little history though, it, it's not like this is new. This has been around for a long period of time, developed in the 1930s for women that had radical hysterectomies, very commonly used in Europe and Australia. It's just not so commonly used in the U.S., but they've been around for a long period of time and actually can very safely done. Sometimes people will hear it say, oh, it's not FDA approved. Certainly it's FDA approved. It's, it's testosterone. It's estrogen. It has to be FDA approved in order to utilize it. They're just taking it and putting it into a pellet form. There's nothing else in it. So it's not like there's a bunch of other stuff in it. It's like, no, it's the hormone. That's what it is. It's the procedure that's not FDA approved. It's not the drug. You know, testosterone is just a, it's a, it's a drug. It's a compound your body makes. Estrogen, it's just a compound your body makes. 
All right, so what do the studies show? And there have been a lot of studies on pellets, and specifically bioidenticals, that we don't see the increased risk in blood clots. We actually see decreased cardiovascular risks, and we do not see an increase in breast cancer. And this is not new. It's where we could break out these studies previously. It's just that they were overshadowed by the synthetic studies. And it's, again, because they're drug companies don't make this stuff. It's typically compounded for us. So, number of things that actually be very protective. Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis isn't something that has a lot of symptoms to it, unless you're breaking your bones all the time. But osteoporosis basically get thinning bones. They're not building strong bones. But testosterone is the bone builder. Okay, and for someone receiving testosterone therapy, we can actually completely reverse osteoporosis. And it can get improved by 8.3% per year for pellet therapy. That's pretty amazing. We can literally reverse this. Okay. Arthritis, well, it could also be helpful with arthritis. And you know, you know, why would that be? Well, part of that is, is that the the receptors, again, are in the bone, they're in the joints, so therefore there are the drug, the testosterone specifically, is doing something there. And some of that is that some of those progenitor cells that, are, that make the cartilage, they're still there. And testosterone and estrogen can both stimulate these cells, and they can actually grow someone and act as that uh, cartilage protection on the joint space. So this can actually be helpful. Breast cancer, that's one of the things that most women are most concerned about, is like, gee, you can get a less or an increased risk of breast cancer. Synthetic hormones, yes, you can. Bioidentical hormones, basically the take-home is this. Both with, with testosterone specifically, but also estrogen, delivered by pellets does not increase the risk of breast cancer, unlike the oral estrogens and the oral testosterone. Testosterone implants actually show much less stimulation of the breast tissue, and testosterone has actually been used in small studies to treat breast cancer because there's actually less risk of, for spread of breast cancer, and it actually has been shown to, to uh, reduce the size of tumors, which is pretty amazing. You don't hear about it. That's not something that is routinely done, but it has been used in small studies to do that. So it does not increase the risk of breast cancer. Alzheimer's, obviously this is something we kind of all fear, losing our mind as we get older. Now, just statistically, women get Alzheimer's disease almost 8 to 1 over men. Women on testosterone are actually 50% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Now, if you think about that, it's like that in itself can be a reason that should consider treatment. Men with low testosterone are three times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. It's like, okay, we need to keep these levels decent and it can prevent some of these problems. So bottom line with all this, not only can we fix a lot of symptoms, but we can actually protect some major you know, protect us from some major health problems. So bioidentical hormone replacement therapy with pellets, it protects your heart, it protects your bones, it protects the breast tissue, and it protects your brain. Now, these are things that typically don't have a lot of symptoms until the problem's there. And so we can actually prevent some of these. Doesn't mean you can't get them. We can actually decrease risk of some of these problems with hormone replacement therapy. That, and we can also get, you know, we can fix a lot of symptoms from, I don't sleep well, I have no energy, I have no libido, I have um, lots of these different things just fade away. I mean, the night sweats, hot flashes, those type of things, they just go away. Now, it does take a little procedure to do this. It literally takes about a minute and a half. So it takes about a minor, a little minor procedure. They're generally placed in the subcutaneous tissue of the buttock area. You can get a little swelling, a little bruising, a little soreness. We basically numb that, clean that area up, numb it up, make a little tiny incision, and we place these pellets underneath the skin into the, the fatty tissue that, that's in that area. 
Um, you do need to be a little careful for a few days afterwards. You don't want to you know, work those pellets back out, but it generally is going to last a good three to four months in women, about six months or so in men. Typically, we will check some blood work about six weeks after the insertion, just kind of make sure we got those levels up where we wanted them and that it's in that it's actually fixing some of your symptoms. That's what we're trying to do. Fix the symptoms, but also protect you. So what are patients saying that are doing this? They have increased energy levels. They sleep a lot better. They have restored interest in life. Yes, they do have a better libido, so there's increased sexual drive, more consistently, consistency in their moods, relief from some depression as well as anxiety, kind of better mental clarity. I can remember what I'm doing all the time, decreased body fat, and it's easier to get into shape. You want to call it because if we've optimized these hormones, testosterone is kind of the muscle builder, the bone builder again. So just a little bit of medical humor to finish this all off. So yes, we can protect your bones and your breast and your heart tissue and so in your brain. Okay. But here's a little cartoon for you. Dinah's woman talking to her doctor. Can you give me something to make my hot flashes hotter, hot enough to melt fat? burn calories and ignite passion. Well, something to consider. If you have questions, give us a yell at the Center for Hormone Health and Wellness. Okay, there's the website there. It's www.centerforhormonehealthandwellness.com. With the phone numbers there, we're at 645 J. Clyde Morris Boulevard, Newport News. Phone number 757-223-0940. 757 0940. Get your labs drawn, set up a, an appointment. We can kind of go over them and see, are you a candidate to consider doing this? And eventually we can get this done. All right. Again, if you have questions, just give us a yell. Thank you for listening and hope to see you soon over at the office. Take care, everyone.